Welcome back to the Redboard. In today's episode, we're going to look at FPV. And to help with that, I have the EV300D FPV goggles from Banggood that they kindly sent to me. Probably going to ultimately do more than one video for this. To start with, I want to explain to you what FPV is, if you don't already know, and also what are the components of an FPV system and how they really don't tie into the other parts that people may expect that they do with remote controlled models, whether they be boats, cars, planes, quadcopters. I guess they're a kind of plane. Anyway, um, it's really a completely separate system to that. And also, there is a lot of misnomer around about what the different resolutions are and what you can expect to actually see through a pair of FPV goggles or at least a remote screen from whatever you're um, putting yourself into. So to start with, what is FPV? FPV stands for First Person View. So if you think of driving a car, when you're sitting in the driver's seat, you are the first person. You're looking out of the windshield, you're driving the car. If you're in a plane, you're in the cockpit seat looking out the window, hopefully, or flying by instruments and you are in control and everything you do is from your perspective um, and if you're in a you know a remote control car you're still in the driver's seat if you're in a remote control plane you are effectively in the driver's seat so first person view allows you to put yourself into the driver's seat from a visual perspective and if you've got a microphone even from a sound perspective but you're actually um, on the ground in some safe location wearing a, typically a pair of goggles like these EV300Ds. Um, there are lots of different ones of different qualities, but the principles are the same. Where whatever you are controlling, you are effectively placed into the driver's seat because there is a camera placed effectively where your head would be replacing your eyes and you have a radio typically transmitting the video back to a receiver and then that video signal is being fed into a pair of goggles or an LCD screen on a smartphone uh, or something like that. There are different types of systems, the simplest ones where you have a controller and it has a little clip on the top for your cell phone and the, the remote controlled vehicle is simply transmitting a Wi-Fi signal with the video from the camera straight back to that phone. It is completely separated from the remote control aspect of it. It's a separate feed from the model or the real thing. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, back to your senses. Now, sometimes there is a little bit of integration to the remote control side to bring back extra information. But all that is, is an injection of uh, typically text into the video stream so that it shows up on your view as well. But it is not directly uh, interacting with the control of the model. You are providing that control. And you know, from this point forward, we'll talk about models as opposed to being in a full-size car, although the principle is the same. If you set up the electronics and the mechanics to remotely control a full-size car, it would work in exactly the same way as if you were controlling a small, you know, sub-250 gram uh, model quadcopter or a little plane or a remote control car motorcycle, whatever it might be, or boat, right? Principles is going to be the same. There'll be a camera in the thing that you're controlling, a transmitter sending the signal back to you, a receiver either built into some goggles or some other device feeding a screen, and then your eyeballs looking at that, and then you're doing the control, your mind, um, using the controls of the remote control unit back to the model to make it do something. So let's just get a um, couple of things out of the way first, uh, namely what are some of the parts that we need for FPV. So to start with, what am I using for goggles? I mean, you've got the big picture here. So what I've got here is the Banggood page for the Esheen EV300D goggles, 
they have a resolution of 1280 by 960, which is actually pretty high resolution for um, FPV goals for remote control quadcopters and you know remote control modeling. Uh, there are some better ones, but they're a lot more expensive. As you can see here right now, we have a 48% off. This price is Canadian, so if you buy in US dollars, that's going to be a lot cheaper than that, uh, which is pretty good. And this is what the goggles will look like. All right, this is all fully assembled. Um, you actually only have to, you know, put the strap on and the battery pack and things. And they come in, it, it, these particular ones will come in either the white or the black. And they have a number of very cool features to them. They have four SMC connectors for antennas. And what we have inside here is we have two separate two-channel receivers, effectively giving you four separate receivers into these goggles. Most goggles will have either one or two. These particular ones have four. And what it is, it allows you to put a number of different types of antennas up or have your antennas in different orientations. I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of technical details with antennas, but orientation and types of antennas matter considerably for how good a signal you will receive and what kind of range you will get. Um, so this allows you to have up to four different antennas on it. The controls at the top are for picking different menus and things like that. And there are quite a few adjustments on these goggles to tune it for your own use. So some of the specifications for these goggles, just to get this out of the way, it operates on a frequency of 5.8 gigahertz. This is the receiver that is plugged into the. So there's four receivers, each one running on the nominal frequency of 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, there is quite a range to it because there are probably in excess of 50, 60, 70 separate channels for when you're, you know, you're racing against other people. You don't want to have your video signal overlapping on somebody else's. You want to be able to see your own thing and not be distracted by other things. Um, you've got SMA female antenna sockets for your antennas to go in. You don't get an antenna with these goggles. You have to buy your own separately. This is why my video has been a little bit late coming out because I got the goggles and realized I didn't have any antennas, so I had to order some, and uh, it takes quite a while right now to get them into Canada. It's got audio, separate audio and video in and out on these goggles. It supports NTSC and PAL, so you know if you're in the UK or somewhere else, though the video standard is different, then you can use that. But the transmitters also can be switched between the two, and you need to bear in mind that um, PAL may have a slightly slower frame rate of 50 hertz typically because that's what they have in the UK. The frame rate is how quickly it will update a full frame of video in front of your eyes effectively. And it's nearly always linked to the frequency of the mains when it comes to analog video. And this is using analog video. Yes, there are some digital ones out right now, but this is an analog system that we're looking at. Um, NTSC has less lines, um, 4485 displayable as opposed to, I think, 576, but it is at 60 hertz, so it's got a slightly faster um, frame rate. Uh, you can adjust the brightness, the contrast. Uh, you've got adjustments for your pupils. It has an 800 degree of myopia and hyperopia, 300 degrees adjustments. Uh, it can handle it. It's got frames in it for adding your own lenses. So if you've got some astigmatism or something like that, you can get your own lenses. They're not included. Uh, you can provide power, uh, typically from LiPo batteries, uh, very much the same as you would use for your remote control models, anywhere between uh, 2S and, uh, what's that, 6S by the look of it. Uh, they only weigh about 208 grams. Now that probably does not include the battery, with the battery is balanced at the back of your head as opposed to the front, so that will help. Um, you get a case with it, EV300D goggles. We'll be looking, opening up the box in a moment. Um, you get an 18650 battery case that'll take a couple of batteries. Um, you don't get batteries with it either. Uh, eyeglass frames, so that you could take those to your an optician and get them to cut some glass for you if you had an astigmatism or you wanted to have a uh, prescription put into the frame for you so that you didn't have to wear your glasses, if, assuming you wear glasses. 
and it comes with two FPV receivers. Now, as I said, these are dual channel, and the way that the system works is it picks the strongest signal. You get a user manual and you get a cloth for wiping down the case the, and the things like that. So let's go down, have a little bit more look at what we've got in here. Um, again, resolution 1280 by 960. That's not quite a, it's not a 1080p for sure. Uh, and it's a bit more than 720p. Now we'll see in a moment how um, you can be misled if you're not careful as to what you may be thinking you're going to get in front of your eyes as opposed to what you really get. And if your expectations are set wrong, you might be a little bit disappointed. True dual diversity, I described that before because you've got the four separate receivers. Um, the goggles have an HDMI input, uh, so you can connect up a PC or some other HDMI source. Uh, we've talked about adjustments. It's got an AV analog in and output as well. Um, you can update the firmware in these if you need to, and some people already have because there were some initial issues on latency and things like that. Uh, battery case, you can you can power this from a USB power supply as well. Um, Built-in DVR. Now the DVR only records at 720p that I understand at 30 frames a second, but it's got it built in anyway. Uh, it has an on-screen display. This gives you information about what's happening while you are using the goggles, so you can see what band you're currently running on. You'll be able to see the signal strength of each of the four separate receivers. Uh, there's a fan built in to stop you fogging up and stop the electronics getting too warm and a battery status. And then, of course, you've got the view that you're looking at. Um, I'll give you a link to everything anyway so you can read through this yourself. And you can have it automatically scan or you can have it... you set a specific one depends on how you're using the goggles there's nothing that stops you having 10 people all tuned to the same transmitter it doesn't affect the transmission doesn't affect the model allows other people to watch what you're doing anyway when you're doing an auto search this is the kind of screen you'll get up it tells you where um, the signal strength is as it scans through all the 72 different channels uh, repeating a bit more than we've already looked at hdmi in uh, it will take up to a 1080p signal and that'll down convert it, I'd imagine, because you've only got a resolution of effectively 720p when you're feeding it in with an external signal. Uh, fairly typical for most screens, whether it be FPV goggles or a TV, where you can pick um, different types of display modes. So we've got vivid, soft, standard, uh, user adjustable. Uh, it actually has the capability of handling sound. I'm not, I can't remember if there's an audio out on here or not. Um, but it will handle sound and it would record that. A lot of the FPV transmitters will also handle sound. And as we go through different parts of the system, you'll see that some cameras that you can get have a microphone built in. Others do not. Um, to be honest, if you're that close to the motor that's belting away on, a, say, a quadcopter, you're not going to hear much more than the motors anyway. But it might give you a clue that something's going wrong, potentially. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just you're not going to be... Uh, you know, 50 feet away from some people and listening in on conversations, that's not going to happen. And you shouldn't be using FPV drones for spying anyway. Uh, vision adjustments on the bottom of the glasses, we've got some adjustments for diopter and scale. Uh, you can adjust how far out the lenses are and you can adjust the focal um, for each of them independently. So if you do have a little bit of a uh, focusing issue, you know, whether you wear glasses, as long as it's not too strong, you should be able to adjust to suit you um, without having to necessarily put some additional lenses into the camera or try to wear, sorry, into the goggles or try to wear your glasses inside. And I actually do wear glasses anyway, as you can see, so I will test this out, see if I can set it up so I can see clearly without having to wear glasses. A little bit more about lenses. Uh, let's keep going down. Yeah, so we've got AV in, AV out via a um, jack. So the AV video part is input and output. You've got audio left and audio right and a ground. So you can feed into this or you can have the signal fed out. And if you're receiving HDMI, I'd imagine you'd be able to plug in some headphones 
and listen to that with headphones on as well as the goggles. Or if you wanted to listen to your uh, model, you could put some headphones on probably as well. Again, we'll give that a little bit of a test. So aspect ratios, you can adjust um, 16 by 9, 4 by 3. Um, you can update the firmware by putting in a TFT card, uh, like a little SD card, or you can put in a USB memory stick and upgrade. You'd have to use an on-the-go adapter for that, of course. Built-in DVR, you can put a little SD card in. I'll actually do a recording uh, in a controlled manner. I won't be trying to do it flying a drone. I'm not very good at flying drones yet at all. Um, but we're more interested in the FPV system, not my flying skills, so don't worry about that. Uh, but we'll test out the recording. Um, I can even feed it some real video uh, into the transmitter, and um, or we can feed a signal directly into the goggles and see what it does with it. Um, as I said, it uses an H.264 encoding at 30 frames per second. Recommends a Class 10 um, storage card. What else haven't we covered? I think we've covered most things. Uh, it uses SMA female connectors on the receivers, and you need to be aware of that when you're buying antennas because you can get antennas with all sorts of different um, connectors on the SMA. Okay, so that's all the technical stuff out of the way. Like I said, these are from Banggood, the particular ones I've got, though you can buy them from a number of different sources. Um, I will provide a link and if you like the video and you plan on buying some my link will be an affiliate link it won't cost you any more money but it will if you buy through that link provide a little bit of a kickback to me um, helping support the channel because I don't charge any people uh, for doing this and Banggood is not paying me to do this video either they simply provided the goggles to me all right so let's um, open the goggles up we'll get that out of the way we'll finish the technical review of the goggles and then we'll start looking at other parts of the system they come packed in this uh, like a ballistics nylon kind of package which is really cool nothing else in the box here get that out of the way um, seems quite a nice box for sure container you know quite robust for storing them okay so what have we got in here let's just move this off the side a little bit we'll start at the back and work our way forward shall we foam for fitting into the goggles depending on your face how big it is uh, cleaning cloth instruction manual 18650 battery pack and we'll dig out some batteries in a moment you just drop them right in there and this will plug into the goggles we have a power level indicator so you can check the power levels which is great we have the strap not yet connected nice stretchy um, nice soft cloth so it's not going to irritate hopefully this also has a pouch on the back of it for putting the battery pack into so we have some additional covers for where the receivers go in now the reason for this is because uh, if you decide to get some different receivers, uh, Fat Shark or um, some 900 megahertz video receivers or something like that, uh, there's, you may not fit in the existing shape of the covers that go over the receivers, so these allow you to put different receivers in anyway. And they've got a little window in because a lot of these other third-party receivers will have little LCD displays on them because they may not be controllable from the goggles themselves. Uh, I don't have any additional receivers to put in here, so it's a mute point for me. Uh, we have the goggles. These look like they are um, heat sealed in like a saran wrap kind of thing, vacuum sealed. Well, not vacuum sealed, but certainly tightly airtight sealed. We've got an additional strap, which probably goes over the top of the head for, to go with the goggles. And then we've got what's left of the box so a little bit of a piece of foam in the bottom that's probably going to fit the goggles probably a bit better once they're out of this yeah looks like it um, the adjustments here they're going to be dropping into that slot so this bottom piece of foam would still be needed um, this piece of foam that we had was probably just what was cut out of there 
they probably just added it for shipping packaging anyway so that's all that so let's just get this out of the way let me see if we can put this together once i get it out of the box okay so there is no foam on the goggles yet looks like the lens holders are already in here just to I guess it's a good place to put them these are what you would put additional lenses in if you needed it um, probably good to just leave them in the goggles anyway starting from here let's go to a uh, close-up view shall we so you can see here so here's our slot for the tft card to go in uh, this is all velcro loop side of it not the soft side not the uh, hook side sorry this is the hook side not the loop side so we'll have to put that piece of foam on there we've got the slot for the top strap slots for the side straps so let's look at the top we've got the actually let me just put these covers on here a second let's put them back on here so we have an air input for the fan that blows air in keeps it from fogging up and keeps you cool and keeps the electronics cool we have a dvr control joystick and we have a mode control joystick like a four position and a push and we have an up and down button so we have on the front nothing on the bottom we have a lot of things looks like a usb connection dc input connection we have headphone connection hdmi and we have our av jack and we have our ipd slash EFFL adjustments so these what they do is you can slide them in and out and if we look at the top as I slide these right you slide them in and out for the to get them at the right width of your eyes and then if you rotate the dial I don't know if you can see that I see it better straight up it brings the lenses forward and backward for focusing and they are not both done at the same time which is good because if you have slightly different eyes you can adjust to suit yourself so that's all good stuff uh, i don't know how well i'm going to be able to catch a view of this directly in here with the camera but we'll give it a go and see what happens so let's put the felt in place i guess And we'll see how well that fits on my face here. Well, definitely not with my glasses on. Well, that fits reasonably well. I can't see light anywhere. They're not turned on yet, obviously, so I'm not seeing anything. Uh, but they definitely fit well enough. But there's no way I'm going to be wearing my glasses when I'm using those. Be aware that, you know, if you do have a strong prescription, like I said, you will need to have some way of getting some lenses in there or something like that if you're too strong and you won't work with you all right i'm not going to put all these straps on just yet because what i want to do is take the covers off of here and let you have a see inside let's see how we get this apart now need a screwdriver or a flat blade of some kind i don't have a spudger that big clive would have all right just give me a moment okay a little bit of persuasion and i've got these off so you can see this goes over the side and clips in. It's got four little tabs on it to take it off. Same on the other side. And we've got two radio modules. So if you look at that, I'll take them out so you can get a better view. Um, they've got connectors at one end. In case you're wondering, this is an anti-static bench. So here are our two receivers. These are the only real Aside from uh, putting lenses in, these are the only other two things you can s use or replace. They have a standard connector here. I'll put it up on the screen as to what type of that can, what that is referred to as. This is one of the radio receivers here. Um, and as it happens, I have one of those receivers right here. If you look at this, it's basically got the same pin out as this um, this one is handles a single channel and each of these handles a single channel there's one on this side of the board and there's one on this side of the board 
that you can see there. Now, it's hidden underneath this PCB because this one is the one that's going to look at the receive signal and decide which one of the two antenna signals being received, which one of the two receivers are getting the stronger signal, and that's the one that's going to route out of the edge connector. Same thing applies to this, this one. Now, the only difference between these two is the fact that the boards are mirrored, right? This is the right one, this is the left one, and you can see the baseboard is mirrored with the antenna sockets on it, the SMA connectors, but this L and R board is actually identical. If I turn it around, you see, right there. So that one obviously is identical, there's no reason why it should be different, does the same job and provides the signal into the goggles. So there's nothing really much else to say about these because there's, um, I'm, I will start talking about them, or at least the modules that are in them in a separate video, um, because I've got a whole bunch of FPV things that we're going to go through. But anyway, these are what the radios are that are inside these things that you can replace. And you can see here, um, clearly marked right socket for the right radio and left for the left radio. There are some situations where you would not be able to put uh, two receivers in here. Um, it's incompatibility between some radio systems. I'm not going to go into that right now because this is about these goggles and getting us started to talk about FPV versus um, all these different add-ons. Okay, so let me just get this put back together and we'll see about trying to get a signal into it. Okay, so it's been actually a few days since I finished off going over the hardware of the Ishing E300D goggles and what I've been doing is playing around trying to figure out what I can and can't record, what the formats are and things like that. So it's very difficult to capture anything through the goggles eyepiece. I have done a couple of quick captures as best I could with a uh, webcam. There's anything I can get really, really close to. Um, so anyway, here's a bit of a conclusion. So I can't really show you the best qual what the quality of the view is. It's very subjective, but I've connected a quadcopter with, it's a 600 TVL, and I've already explained to you that, you know, 600 TVL, 1200 TVL, uh, they don't make a huge amount of difference because you're on an analog um, old TV standard as far as the transmission mechanism is concerned between your device that you've got the camera on. And I also did, uh, let me just go uh, wider view here if I can. No, nope, that's not the way. Um, I also wired up a separate camera on just a transmitter, no quadcopter or anything else, but it's still using the quadcopter technology, okay? It's the kind of camera and transmitter you'd put on a quadcopter or any other remote device, basically. And um, so this red camera right here is a 1200 TVL. And the picture quality that I was observing was a little bit better but the limitations really are the bandwidth of the radio systems, not the goggles themselves. So I tried to capture um, on the built-in DVR some signals. Um, you've got three potential inputs. You've either got the 5.8 gigahertz um, signal. You've got your AV input um, through a jack underneath, or you've got an HDMI input. So I could not get the AV input to work at all. Um, my Blackmagic um, capture card also has a video output, but it will only go down to a 576i or a 480i video picture, depending on whether you're picking NTSC or uh, PAL. And it's at 50 or 60 hertz too. I cannot make it 25. So the goggles would not accept that. It did, however, accept a full 1080p HDMI signal in, and the 
video quality, the picture that you were looking at was exceptional. I could actually watch a movie on there quite happily. And even my Windows menus were perfectly visible and available to me. Obviously, I'm not looking at my real screen. And so finding things on the table while I'm wearing the goggles would be a bit weird. But if you wanted to watch a movie or something, you could plug in some headphones and you could do that quite easily with an HDMI lead connected to it. But the DVR capability of the goggles does not work, or I could not get it to work, when you selected an external AV input or an external HDMI input. The icon for the SD card that you had plugged in would only become available if you were using the 5.8 gigahertz receiver. To me, that, you know, that seems a bit of a limitation because if you had an external AV signal that you were plugging into, uh, you know, I, you would still want to be able to record that. Now, I can understand with the HDMI that copyright and things would get in the way potentially. But if you're just using the AV inputs, it's all SD quality, not HD quality. So I don't see why it shouldn't let you do any capture there, but it didn't anyway. Um, I wasn't trying to evaluate cameras or the antennas and things. I was just looking at the goggles. So really, I've kind of run out short of taking this apart, and I may do that in a separate video. I've run out of things that I can really look at with this. Um, a lot of my feedback to you is subjective. I can't show you it. I will put up images as best I can that I've managed to capture with the DVR and with the using one of my um, 8 megapixel webcams. But it's still, you know, it's not easy to show you, you know, the, the best resolution and the best quality, what your eyeballs are actually seeing. It looks a lot better with your eyes than it did with the capture. So anyway, um, yeah, the goggles, I think there is a lot of potential for them. They, for the price, they are very good compared to other ones. With a resolution of 1280 by 960, it'll quite happily play through the HDMI port, a 720p uh, video signal very, very happily. And I tried that and, you know, whilst I can't show you it because I couldn't get a good capture through the uh, eyepiece, it did happily show it. Uh, unable to, com completely unable to either capture an output of the AV or an input uh, feeding into the goggles. I couldn't get either of those to work because it couldn't generate the signals. And that's probably because that particular technology outside of the standard FPV equipment that you buy, uh, which is all seems to be using uh, the PAL standards, but progressive scan, um, nothing these days really supports it. So I would say that, you know, the DVR capability for capturing the live video stream does work, but it's not capturing 720p. It's capturing... Um, 480 or 576, depending on whether you're using PAL or NTSC. So you need to be aware of that. Haven't been able to get the sound capture to work yet. I think that may be more to do with the fact that my uh, quadcopter and my little uh, Ishin TX805, I couldn't get them to operate with the audio. Um, so you'd have to have... Uh, radio gear that actually has the audio channel being sent and I don't know if the receiver end of this has got the audio in it as well. I'd have to pull, a, pull it apart and see. I really can't see on the user guide whether there is, uh, there's no mention of whether you can actually pull in the audio from your radio. Uh, I'm assuming there is but I couldn't get it to work yet. I will be doing some more investigation over the next little while on it. And if I find anything interesting, I will let you know. The tuning and diversity seems to work quite well. Um, I need to get some more adapters because, as I said in, earlier in the video, the goggles come with SMA female connectors. And uh, my initial review um, of what information was available on the internet I guess maybe there were an early version of the goggles or I got mixed up somewhere and I got the um, antennas with the wrong connections on I got RP antennas instead of just straight SMA connected antennas so I've had to use adapters and I could only get three antennas connected 
but they all were capturing the signal and as you'll see in the little screen captures I'll put one up right now you can see that all four antennas are showing a good signal you don't have control over which antenna you use that's all automatic in the firmware um, but it seems to work quite quite well so in normal operation you would put potentially different antennas on there or at least the same kind of and uh, ideally you would put the same kind of antenna as you have on your transmitter but if you're using a vehicle that could be changing orientation all the time like a quadcopter or an airplane or something like that then having different antennas even if it was just a dipole or something in different orientations to maximize your reception capability would be a good idea and that's where uh, having these uh, you know, multiple diversity antennas comes in uh, also when you start getting reflections and things like that if you've got more of buildings around you and things it also helps to uh, allow you to capture a stronger signal as well so do I like these goggles yes I do uh, and I'm gonna try them once I learn how to fly a bit better I will be giving them a go uh, with my quadcopters and things to uh, see how well it works in flight and I'll be doing a separate video once I've got some experience with that um, to show you there is the capability of obviously changing the receivers in the goggles now you know you can get fat shark ones and various other ones that will go in here but whether the video signal within the radio modules that plug in here will support better than the standard NTSC or PAL old TV signals has yet to be determined. There's nothing in the specifications for that. I will try and email Ishin's tech support regarding the goggles to see if they can shed any light on this. Um, but I did also notice that there are some new goggles available from Ishin as well, which has even higher um, specifications than this one. And of course, they're more expensive. Uh, but they also have motion tracking in the headpiece. So if you were going to use them for 3D games and things like that, they would probably work. I don't have them for review or anything right now. And from a technical perspective, I'd love to be able to have a look at them. But that'll have to wait for another day. Um, so for now, uh, yeah, the goggles, they're well built. They're pretty good. Haven't done a teardown yet. That's for a future video. And, um, you know, a little bit noisy when it's running, when the fan kicks in, because the electronics do get a bit warm. Um, but I didn't have any experience with them fogging up or anything like that. So uh, I think, as I said, if you get these things when they're on sale, they make a great um, FPV goggles for quadcopters, boats, cars, etc. And you could have a lot of fun with it. And I'd imagine, and I'll find out myself soon enough, that flying with goggles versus trying to watch with your eyes will probably make for a more enjoyable experience because you're not trying to switch your head around to the orientation of your uh, your vehicle that you're controlling, you know, you're always looking out of the windshield, so to speak, and um, so it would be easier to control it. Oh, that's my thought. Anyway, we'll find out. Just be aware that you're not gonna. The biggest thing I think takeaway with these goggles is they do tell you that you're, you know, your 1280 by 960 resolution, but you're not gonna get that with standard. 5.8 uh, gigahertz uh, radio equipment, FPV equipment, because yeah, seven sorry, maximum 720 by 480 or 720 by 576 um, capture capability, because that's all that the NTSC standard supports and the video chips. I will provide links to the actual chips that are used in the radio gear. Um, they only have a bandwidth on the video of about six to eight megahertz, so that quite significantly limits the resolution of anything that you're going to see on the screen uh, you know and it doesn't matter whether it's fat shark Isheen, or any other make they're all basically using the same chipsets and the same radio gear around that um, so you know if, if you're contemplating buying an analog fat shark system versus one of these um, you're probably just as well going with a pair of these or the newer ones that have come out are using oled instead of these, um, I can't remember they call it now, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. Although these ones are perfectly adequate and they seem to work very well. The other thing is that it still only works at 30 frames a second. It is not working at 60 frames. Or at least that's what it captures. I don't know if it's actually displaying at faster than 30 frames a second. 
So no matter what you're doing, you're already limited to a refresh rate of about 40 milliseconds. I mean, if you think about it, NTSC and PAL, you know, when it's progressive, it's only 25 frames per second. Even if it's interlaced, it's still, you know, it's it says 50 or 60 hertz refresh rate, but that is not a full video frame. That is two half frames that are being added together. So whether it's progressive or whether it is um, interlaced, it's still really only 25 or 30 full frames per second. So you're never going to get better than about 20 or less, sorry, not even 20, 40 milliseconds uh, latency because that's what it would take to build up a picture. And in a lot of cases, because of the intermediate things, like from the camera, it's got to uh, serialize it out of the camera as an analog video uh, into the radio transmitter with the delays across the air into the receiver. Then it's got to reformat it into a 1080p video to feed onto the LCD panels. You know, that takes time. So I don't think you're ever going to get much better than about 50 millisecond screen refresh rate. So for most things, that's probably okay. Um, I haven't been able to measure it and I haven't tried to. I know a few people in their videos have tried to measure the refresh rate, but you know, it's not always just measuring the goggles, you're measuring the entire uh, radio system. So be skeptical about what people are saying for the refresh rates because it very much depends on the camera, the transmitter, any OSD, on-screen display, mechanisms that are in between as well before it actually gets to your eyeballs. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm starting to drivel on a bit. So uh, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, then don't. Uh, big thanks to Banggood for sending these to me, and I look forward to playing with them some more and getting back to you with my findings once I start flying or driving some vehicles with them. Bye for now.